Hello and welcome back to another episode of Dragon Age Origins. My name is Pixelidia Twix and the last time we left off we had just cleared out Soldier's Peak and so today we are going to continue on with the journey um, and I came back to camp real quick just so I could get the video started and Sten of course just he just comes right in he just he just can't he just can't let me get any peace you know right as soon as we get to the the camp he needs to start a conversation and he just said, uh, I don't understand. You look like a woman. Okay. What part of that, um, what part of me looking like a woman do you not understand? But we'll go ahead and, and um, appease him and um, see what he has to say. So what's not to understand about that? You are a Grey Warden, so it follows that you can't be a woman. Why not? Women are priests, artisans, shopkeepers, or farmers. They don't fight. Okay. Um, I mean, sure. I could see his point. And there's probably going to be some women out there going to be uh, really upset with me when I say this. But women do not belong in the battlefield. They don't. Um, because men are extremely strong. They're much stronger than we are. And most men are that are on the battle well let's see most warriors are men i would say about 99.9 percent .9 warriors are men and there's obviously a select few uh, women that are you know strong like that but for the most part men are stronger than women and maybe that's what he means because kunari could i guess in the Kanari culture, you don't see women on the battlefield. At least I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know because now I'm starting to question. Oh, you know what? Let me just let me just continue on the conversation. Let me just continue on the conversation because I'm, yeah. Forget I said anything because now I'm really confused about Kanari culture and maybe that's something that I need to look up. But from what I gather, you never see a female Kanari warrior. But when I start looking at Dragon Age Inquisition and the choices that you can make for your character customization, you can be a female Kanari warrior. So I don't know. Anyways, I finished my thought. I said I was going to move on. So we're moving on. OK, that's not a universal truth. Some women fight. That is true. That is a there, that is an exception to the rule. Why would women ever wish to be men? That makes no sense. Okay, they don't wish to be men. They wish to be women who fight. Or you think they can't be women because women don't fight. No, this makes any sense then. I guess I can understand what he's saying because women don't fight. But that doesn't mean that I'm not a woman. And that doesn't mean that I'm trying to be a man. Well, that I, I guess that... I, could, I guess it could be both and because in his culture, women don't fight. And in most cultures, even today, women are not warriors. We're not warriors. We're not naturally warriors. We're not warriors. Um, and so obviously there are there are exceptions to the rules. And so maybe that's what he's trying to navigate in his own mind. Like how how does how is this working? I, that's the only way I can anyways okay I'm I'm reading into this conversation more than I probably should but it's very prevalent to today's society when you think about it right so wow okay Bioware out here predicting cultural differences in 2024 all right let's go do they also wish to live on the moon that's as attainable I'm a woman and I'm fighting um, yeah, I'm a woman, I'm a fight, and I'm fighting. One of those things can't be true. A person is born, Gunari or human or elven or dwarf. He doesn't choose that. The size of his hands, whether he is clever or foolish, the land he comes from, the color of his hair, these are beyond his control. We do not choose, we simply are. Bioware out here doing the Lord's work. But a person can choose what to do. That is true. You can choose your occupation. Can they? We'll see. I got one plus a approval for that. I don't know if he really liked my answer, but he is, you know, speaking the truth. Um, 
I'm not going to have any conversation with anyone. I'm just going to go ahead and head out to the next uh, quest. Uh, I'm going to grab Alistair. Yes. I think, oh, I'm, I'm, do I want to take, I know I want to take yes. one because she's my healer. I'm almost afraid to take Zevran. But, ooh, okay. Mm. Uh, did we take Liliana the last time? Let's take Liliana. Trying to, I want to try to mix it up. I'll be honest with you. Be very honest with you. If I were not playing this on camera, I probably would just have the same team constantly. Because Morgan and Wynn are just strong. Okay, they're a strong team, and obviously Alistair is my warrior of choice because he's sword and board all the way. But we're going to try to mix it up a little bit. But I apologize ahead of time if I do kind of favor my favorites. Um. Oh, yes. Yeah. So I said the last time we were going to head to Red Cliff, so that's where we're going. We're going to head to Red Cliff Village and see what's going down there because we are looking for... Um, the Earl there, and that we got uh, stopped on the road. What do we got? What do we got? This doesn't look good. They're just gonna attack us, right? No. Okay. Hello. Rough travels out here, eh? We even saw Dark Spawn on the way in. Okay. Darkspawn? You don't say. Right. Darkspawn. We killed a whole band of them on the way up from Lothering. We're delivering a message to the Chantry in Denerim. You? What's this message about? We saw a blood mage down near the Brazilian forest. We're off to tell the Chantry about him. I, uh, I'm here to stop you? What? Okay. This must have been a quest or something because I'm here to stop you. I thought you said... Wait. You're serious? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Turn around now and just go home. Ooh, why don't you let us deliver your message? Yes. Uh, I suppose that's all right. As long as it gets there. Stay safe. Hmm. That was easy. Everybody left. That's right. Go home. Take your ball. All right. Before we leave the area, let's check for goodies. It's like, okay, that's just a pathway back. Got some elf root, death root. We always welcome that. Very well. And head back to, can we go this way? Yes. All right, to Red Cliff we go. Hopefully we won't get stopped again, but I don't think we will. I don't think we will. Look, can we talk for a moment? Um, I sure. need to tell you something. I um, should probably have told you earlier. Hmm. I'm not going to like this, am I? I don't know. I doubt it. I've never liked it, that's for sure. Oh. Well, uh, let's see. How do I tell you this? We're almost at Redcliffe. Yes. Did I say how I know Arl Eamon exactly? I think you said he... I think you said he raised you? I'm a bastard. My mother was a serving girl at Redcliffe <laughs> Castle, and she died when I was born. Our Lehman took me in and raised me before I was sent to the Chantry. The reason he did that was because, well, because my father was King Marrick, which made Kaelin my half-brother, I suppose. Hmm. So you're not just a bastard, but a royal bastard. Ha! Yes, I guess it does at that. I should use that line more often. I, I would have told you, but it never really meant anything to me. I was inconvenient, a possible threat to Kaelin's rule, and so they kept me secret. I'd never talked about it to anyone. Everyone who knew either resented me for it or they coddled me. Even Duncan kept me out of the fighting because of it. I didn't want you to know as long as possible. I'm sorry. Hmm. I think I understand. Oh, good. I'm glad. It's not like I got special treatment for it anyhow. 
Al Eamon eventually married a young woman from Orlais, despite all the problems it caused with the king so soon after the war. He loved her a great deal. Anyway, the new Arlesa resented the rumors which pegged me as the Arl's bastard. They weren't true, but of course they existed. The Arl didn't care, but she did. So off I was packed to the nearest monastery at age 10. Just as well. The Arlesa made sure the castle wasn't a home to me by that point. She despised me. Did she know the truth about you? She may have, but I think it's more likely that she feared the rumors might be true. Mm. I can't blame her for that. I remember I had an amulet with Andraste's holy symbol on it. The only thing I had of my mother's. I was so furious at being sent away, I tore it off and threw it at the wall. And it shattered. Stupid, stupid thing to do. The Isle came by the monastery a few times to see how I was, but I was stubborn. I hated it there and blamed him for everything. And eventually he just stopped coming. Hmm. You were young. He was. And raised by dogs. Or I may as well have been the way I acted. But maybe all young bastards act like that. I don't know. All I know is that the Arl is a good man and well-loved by the people. He also was King Kaelin's uncle, so he has a personal motivation to see Loghain pay for what he did. So there you have it. Now can we move on? And I'll just pretend you still think I'm some nobody who was too lucky to die with the rest of the Grey Wardens. I mean, aren't you? <laughs> see? I knew you could do it. It's easy, isn't it? Yeah. I hate that shield. Okay. So we got a plus four from Alistair, area unlocked, Red Cliff. Um, yeah, we're going to check and see what's going on up here. Don't think there's much. All right, we're going to go over here. Who's this guy? Thomas? Thomas? I thought I saw travelers coming down the road, though I scarcely believed it. Have you come to help us? Sure. I'm on important business. I need to see Earl Eamon. The Earl? Then you, you, you don't know. Has nobody out there heard? I've heard that Arl, uh, Arl Eamon is sick, if that's what you mean. He could be dead for all we know. Nobody's heard from the castle in days. We're under attack. Monsters come out of the castle every night and attack us until dawn. Everyone's been fighting and dying. We've no army to defend us. No Arl and no king to send us help. So many are dead, and those left are terrified they're next. Hold on, what is this evil that's attacking you? I, I, I don't rightly know. I'm sorry, nobody does. I should take you to Ban Tegan. He's all that's holding us together. He'll want to see you. Ban Tegan, our Lehman's brother, he's here. Yes. It's not far, if you'll come with me. Okay. It's Thomas, yes? And who are these people with you? They are obviously not simple travelers. No, my lord. They just arrived, and I thought you would want to see them. Well done, Thomas. Greetings, friends. My name is Tegan, Ban of Rainersphere, brother to the Arl. I remember you, Ban Tegan. Though the last time we met, I was a lot younger and covered in mud. Covered in mud? Alistair? It is you, isn't it? You're alive! This is wonderful news. Still alive, yes. Though not for long if Tern Loghain has anything to say about it. Indeed. Loghain would have us believe all Grey Wardens died along with my nephew, amongst other things. Hmm. You don't believe Loghain's lies. What, that he pulled his men in order to save them? That Caelan risked everything in the name of glory? <laughs> Hardly. Loghain calls the Grey Wardens traitors, murderers of the king. I don't believe it. It is an act of a desperate man. So, you are a Grey Warden as well? Is it possible we've met? You seem very familiar. You may have known my father, Tyrion Kuslin. Ah, yes, that's it, exactly. 
A pleasure to meet you indeed, though I wish it were under better circumstances. You're here to see my brother. Unfortunately, that might be a problem. Eamon is gravely ill. No one has heard from the castle in days. No guards patrol the walls, and no one has responded to my shouts. The attack started a few nights ago. Evil things surged from the castle. We drove them back, but many perished during the assault. Um, what evil things are you talking about? Some call them the walking dead, decomposing corpses, returning to life with a hunger for human flesh. They hit again the next night. Each night they come with greater numbers. With Caelan dead and Loghain starting a war over the throne, no one responds to my urgent calls for help. I have a feeling tonight's assault will be the worst yet. Alistair, I hate to ask, but I desperately need the help of you and your friends. It isn't just up to me. Though the Grey Wardens don't stand much chance against Loghain without Arl Eamon. Of course, we'll help. Thank you, thank you. This means more to me than you can guess. Thomas, please tell Murdoch what transpired. Then return to your post. Yes, my lord. Now then, there is much to do before night falls. I put two men in charge of the defense outside. Murdoch, the village mayor, is outside the Chantry. Sir Perth, one of Eamon's knights, is just up the cliff at the windmill, watching the castle. You may discuss with them the preparations for the coming battle. Um... I want to discuss the situation with you. Of course. Let's see. What exactly are these things that attack the village? I do not know. They seem to be walking corpses. Men with rotting flesh that continue to attack even with the gravest injuries. Undead, perhaps. Spirits possessing the bodies of the dead. We could be dealing with a mage, but who would do such a thing? Hmm. You have some of Earl Eamon's knights here? I have those few who returned from their quest. You know of this, yes? The search for the urn of sacred ashes. Yes, I question Isolde's decision to send so many knights in search of this relic. She's desperate? But I am a practical man, whereas she is a woman of great faith. Sir Perth was one of the or knights that. sent on this quest. Perhaps you should speak to him if you wish to learn more. Okay, I should get back to work then. Very well. Luck be with you, my friend. Thank you. Okay, so we've got a dilemma here. Um, we've got a lot of approval too, by the way. And it uh, looks like maybe we can talk to some people here. Maybe. I'm scared, Check this here. It is One the of the bad men coming. Ooh. Soon, Level up. Codex update. Demonic possession. Why do demons seek to possess the living? I'm not going to read that. That's quite long. Not will be all right. quite. I to go home. Where's father? Why can't we go home? I already told you. Father is outside defending the village from the bad men. We must stay here and be brave. Can you do that? I... I guess so. Oh. Why has the king not come? Surely soldiers could have marched here by now. Where are they all? What are they doing? Does she mean King Merrick or does she mean Loghain, who calls himself a king? Let's talk to Arania. Good day. Good day. Jetta? You're a Grey Warden, right? Were you in Ostagar? In the Kokari Wilds? Oh, My husband and son no. went there to bring the chant of light to the chastened. But I haven't heard from them since. Jogby, yes. Uh, Jogby and... Rigby or something? Are you Jetta? I am. You've heard of me? Oh, uh, um, I have something here. I, I'm not gonna tell her. I'll just. I have something here for you from your husband. Oh, oh, his lockbox. If you're bringing me this, oh no, I'm sorry. Thank you so much for bringing this to me means a lot to make his blessings upon you ah oh, yeah i don't i didn't like that at all okay what's this book Thetis calendar 
something else that I'm not going to read. I guess if it's pertinent to the quest or maybe additional information that we have to know. Who is this, Caitlin? I'm so sorry. Am I bothering you? What are we going to do? I'll, I'll try to be more quiet. No, are you all right? Why are you crying? Those, those things dragged my mother away. I don't know what happened to her, but I hear her screaming all the time, everywhere. Ooh. How terrible, you poor thing. I wish there was something we could do to help. And now my brother Bevan, he, he ran off. I, I don't know where he is. I'm so scared they got him too. Um, why would he run off, do you know? He said something about saving mother. He's just a little boy. He doesn't understand she's gone. Grief can make us do many things that mm. don't make any sense, I'm afraid. I hope he didn't try to go to the castle. Oh, that would be awful. Let's see. Um, don't worry, I'll look for him. You will? Yes. Thank you so much. Please find him. Silence, girl. Okay, new quest. Missing child. Caitlin, a young woman who lives in Redcliffe, is afraid for her brother, Bevan. Their mother was dragged off by the creatures from the castle, and now Bevan has run off. Caitlin doesn't know where he is, and she has failed to find him. You told Caitlin you would search for Bevan. Okay. Let's talk to the Let Tegan. The Tegan. Mother you Hannah? You are a stranger amongst us. Yet you still agree to defend our village in its darkest hour. So you heard. We are most grateful to you. Um, I cannot stand by while monsters attack the helpless. Yeah. Not many in these modern days would honestly say the same. You are a woman of worth, and the Maker will smile upon you. Allow me to introduce myself. I am revered Mother Hannah, head of this Chantry which for the moment is a place of refuge for these poor villagers. Surely this cannot be the entire village. These few are all who are left. All those who cannot defend themselves, yes. They are terrified of tonight's attack, and I fear these walls will not keep them safe. What can I do to help with your task? Hmm. I would like your blessing, Mother. Of course, child. Blessed art thou who exists in the Maker's sight. Blessed art thou who seeks his forgiveness. Blessed art thou who seeks his return. Blessed is the prophetess, his daughter, sacrificed to the holy flame. May the chant reach the Maker's ears and tell him of our contrition. Okay. Some things to Why haven't mother and father returned yet. It shall They're be done. Counting of the chantry. Gone, dear boy. Gone on As you say. Trip. And Codex when updated. Commandments of the Maker. Hmm. These truths the Maker has revealed to me. As there is but one world, one life, one death. There is but one God, and He is our Maker. They are sinners who have given their love to false gods. Magic exists to serve man and never to rule over him. Foul and corrupt are they who have taken his gift and turned it against his children. They shall be named Maleficar, accused ones. They shall find no rest in this world or beyond. All men are the work of our maker's hands, from the lowest slaves to the highest kings. Those who bring harm without provocation to the least of his children are hated and accursed by the maker. Those who bear false witness and work to deceive others know this. There is but one truth. All things are known to our Maker, and He shall judge their lies. All things in this world are in, are finite. What one man gains, another has lost. Those who steal from their brothers and sisters do harm to their livelihood and to their peace of mind. Our Maker sees this with a heavy hand, with a heavy heart. I need my glasses on. Transfigurations 1, 1 through 5. This sounds very much like the Bible, although I do think that the Chantry is based off of the Catholic faith. Okay, so I 
I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> what am I supposed to be doing? Okay, village under siege. Prepare Redcliffe for the attack. Van Tegan has directed you to Sir Perth, who leads the Knights of Redcliffe, and Murdoch, the mayor, who's in charge of the militia. Perth and Murdoch will know what Redcliffe needs to be prepared for nightfall and a missing child, so we need to find Devin. All right, so Murdoch, where are you? Murdoch's over here. You know, we don't have the Still no of sign of them coming back from the yeah, castle, no, Murdoch. Tell them to maintain watch. I don't want a surprise attack before the sun goes down. Yes, sir. What should we do until then? Pray and hope for a miracle. Mm, fair enough. So you're the Grey Warden, are you? Yes. I didn't think they made women Grey Wardens. You know, that keeps coming up. It really does. I'm not here to chat. What can I do to help? We need what little armor and weapons we got repaired, and quickly, or half of us will be fighting without either. Owen's the only blacksmith who can do it, but the stubborn fool refuses to even talk. If we're to be ready for tonight, we'll need that crotchety bastard's help. I'll see what I can do. Or... Why does Owen refuse to talk to you? His daughter, Valena, is one of the Alessa's maids. So he hasn't heard from her since this whole business started. He demanded we attack the castle, break down the gate, and force our way in. I said it was impossible, but he wouldn't listen. He's locked himself in the smithy now. I can't force him to do repairs. He said he'd rather die first. Is there anything else you need? We could use some extra bodies. Having a veteran like Dwin in the militia would help a lot. But he flat out refuses. Okay, tell me about Dwen. He's a trader, a dwarf. Lives near the lake. Locked himself up in his home with some of his workers, he has. Says he doesn't need any of us. We could use somebody with his fighting experience, but he won't come out. Okay, carry on then. Right. Let's hope we see morning. Okay, so we need to collect Dwin and the blacksmith. So, there's a door here. The chest right there. I mean, is it over here? Yes. It is begun. Let's grab that. Oh, I know what I keep forgetting to do. Speaking of locked chests. Um... Did I miss? No. Okay, let's go here. Blacksmithy? As you go say. away. Curse you. Leave me in peace. You've already taken everything out of my stores. There's nothing left. Is this Owen, the blacksmith? I need to speak with you. Huh? Who is that? What do you want? I've been through enough. I prefer not to speak through the door. Can I come in? Mm. All right, all right. Let me undo the locks. Thank you. All I ask is that you don't make any trouble. Make his breath. What is that smell? <laughs> it's like someone set a brewery on fire. <laughs> oh my gosh. Somebody's been drinking. So I let you in. You wanted to talk. Now we're talking. Mind telling me who you are? Um, call me Natalia. Anyhow, my name's Owen, though you might already know that. Care to join me as I get besotted? Or is there something in particular you wanted? Owen, we be Owen, you a visit because Murdoch sent us. I had to say it, I'm sorry. Why have you locked yourself in the smithy? My girl, Valena. It's one of the Alessa's maids, and she's trapped up there in the castle, but the mayor won't send anyone for her. She's been my life since my wife passed on two years ago. Now she's dead, or soon to be. I don't care what happens to me, or the village, or anyone. So you intend to drink yourself a death? Why not? It's not like we're going to live past the night anyhow. You don't know that. Or are you going to save us? I intend to try. Is that so? Yes. Mm. Maybe it's the drink talking, but you almost sound like you believe that. 
It'd do me the world of good to think maybe someone like you could go in and find her. Provided any of us live through the night. Hmm. What about the militia? They need your help. If you look for Valena, I'll reopen the smithy and make some repairs for the militia. I can do that much. Okay. I'll do my best. Not good enough. Murdoch said the same damn thing, and I didn't believe him either. What? I want to promise. Promise me that you'll look for her. That you'll bring her back to me if you can. Okay, okay. I promise you I'll find her. We will do our best. Please believe us, friend. I'll accept that. It's something to hope for, at least. Right then. It seems I have some work to do, relighting the forge, and I suppose I'll have to find some iron. Hmm, maybe at the mill. Oh, Murdoch just better send his men here as soon as possible if I'm going to get to all these repairs and get them done by nightfall. If you need anything done, well, just let me know. I've got a lot to do now, so you'll have to excuse me. All right, new ability. We got a new ability. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. skill acquired. Um, is codex updated. When? I will not lie motionless in a bed with coverlets up to my chin, waiting for death to claim me. Wynne's talent became apparent early on, particularly her skill at healing magic. She was well liked by all her mentors and was recognized as an exceptionally gifted student. Even the Templars who watched her could not deny that she represented the best circle the circle had to offer. She was an intelligent young woman who possessed a quiet confidence and maturity behind beyond her eight years. <laughs> I cannot read. <laughs> she spent many years mentoring apprentices within the circle. And her peers thought so highly of her that she was asked to be first enchanter Irving's successor, but she refused, saying that she had no desire to work in the upper ech echelons. When word reached the Tower of King Kalen's call to arms, Wynn volunteered to go to Ostagar. For Wynn, the printed word is as a window to true understanding, a scholar by heart. She feels that what a people commit to the on page is set sacred by definition now earlier i said something about king merrick and i actually meant king Kalen. king merrick was king Kalen's father and uh, obviously uh alistair's father too so papa was a rolling stone yes um oh and uh, i'm gonna check this crate over here As hope you don't mind hey i see you found my hiding place oh i stuck some old equipment in there before murdoch could get his hands on it can I, uh... I don't think there's anything you'll need in there. But it's hard to say. I was in a bit of a rush when I filled it up. Um, can the militia use this? Not if I'm going to repair the equipment they have. Oh. That stuff is old, anyhow. Okay. Yeah. Let me open it for you. Sure. I have the key. Let's see what we got in here. Owen? Owen. Oh, and this isn't working. Oh. Owen. Oh, oh, there I it goes. It. <laughs> I was going to say, Owen. I'm going to take all of this, Owen. Thank you. It shall be done. All right, now that we've accomplished getting our blacksmith, then we need to go ahead and... Oh, do we need to talk to him again? Let's talk to him again. Well, it looks like Owen's finally doing the repairs we need. Mm -hmm. The damn fool is falling over a drunk and still manages to make smithying look easy. Good enough, I say. I'll send one of my men to inform Bantigan the militia is ready for battle. I still need to speak to Sir Perth. Yes. You'll find him and his men at the mill by the bridge to the north. Right. Let's hope we see morning. Okay. Also, we need to find... Um... Who do we need to find? Hold on. 
Um, where am I at? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. There was a door. Here it is. I was going to say, I'm like, I saw. Oh, that is us over here. Wooden crate. There's another door right here. Let's go in here first. Cute little house. There's a book back here. New Codex. The Legend of Kalanhad. Chapter 1. Hmm. Yeah, I know. Maybe later. I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments if you want me to read some of these. I know I read a few, but... All right, when you approach the dresser, something moves inside. You hear a short surprise and take a breath, and then silence. Hello? Is someone in there? Go away. This isn't your home. Young man, come out this instant. You'd better I... listen. Yes, ma'am. That's right. All right, I came out. You won't hurt me, will you? I'll go back to the Chantry if you really want. I won't hurt you. First, tell me what you were doing in there. I... I can't tell you. It's a secret. Mm, are you sure? Maybe I could help you. You could. All right, I guess. I just... Father said I could have his sword when I grew up. It was Grandfather's. And Grandfather was a great dragon slayer. I thought... If I was brave like Grandfather, I could use his sword and kill the bad people who took Mother. Hmm. You have the right idea. You are indeed very brave. Thank you, Miss. But the sword w is too heavy for me. I guess I'm not as strong as I thought I was. Um, you'll grow up eventually. Don't worry about it. That doesn't help us now. No. Caitlin says everyone's going to die tonight. Let's see. No, not if I'm here to help, they won't. Really? You must be very brave. I wish I was like you. Uh, where's the sword now? In the chest. In Mother's room. Father gave me a key, but I'm not supposed to give it to anyone. But I could use that sword to help the village. You could? Maybe you could give my sister money? She said if we had oh. money, we'd be all right. Even if mother is dead. Did I say I was going to pay for the sword? I must have hit the wrong button. Yeah, okay. I guess I'm paying for the sword now. Um, But I could use that sword to help the village. That's what I meant to say. But I can't give it to you. It was father's. Caitlin would be so mad if I did. Mm. Don't worry about it. Go back to your sister. But I... Oh, all right. I guess. She'll be pretty mad at me. Yes, she will. But I'll go. Okay, so I didn't get the sword. Oh, well. I couldn't persuade him. I don't think my persuasion is up high enough, but... Let's I'll see. Yeah. Oh, well. But here, what's this? New Codex, Cautionary Tales for the Adventurous. It was then that he realized he wasn't alone. The abandoned camp in front of him was unbelievably welcoming, like a mirage. The fire felt like a warming hand grabbing his heart. It reminded him of a previous life so long ago when he was happy running in the sunflower fields with his boy, the sun in his face, laying next to the fireplace with his beautiful wife in his arms. He felt a sharp pain in his heart. His thoughts shifted to that fateful day when everything changed. Blood was everywhere. He held the body of his dead wife in his arms. Around him, the ashes of his burned house fell like snow. The stench was terrible. It smelled like darkspawn. He grabbed his axe, touched the icy cold hands of his boy and left. He would kill them. He would kill them all. 
The pain in his heart was unbearable. He opened his eyes and saw the second most terrifying thing he would see in his life, a shadowy wraith leaning over him, leeching his life away. Around him, the camp was gone, replaced by something familiar, almost peaceful. Bones, death, and despair. He wondered if all his life had been an illusion, if he'd ever had a family. For a brief moment, he felt relief. You can't lose something you never had, but being this close to death brought clarity. He knew it was real. Everything else was the illusion. You could see a smile on his torn face. He had been waiting for this moment for a long, long time. He lifted his weak arms, grasped the demon's face, and kissed it. It felt like kissing a cloud made of sand and dust. Suddenly... All sorrow left him, and with it, the last bit of life he had. Before his limp body hit the ground, it was all over. He was finally free. From Cautionary Tales for the Adventurous by Brother Ramos of Gearheme, 794 Storm. That is pretty dark. All right. So we didn't get the sword. But we did get Bevan, so that's the most important thing. Now let's go this way. Go in here first. And then that door. Anything over here? Yeah. It's a few things. Wooden crate. A barrel. A sign. And we got quartz. I think that's useless, but... Well, I can sell it. Lake Callanhead. No swimming. Lake Callanhead. No who? Who wants to swim in that? I'm not swimming in that. Okay, I'm not reading all that. We just finished reading, but maybe. Maybe. Yeah, let's check. Let's see what's in this crate. More poultices. Is that like a like, little chicken house? A little hen house? Okay, so we need to get Dwin, and then we need to speak to Sir Perth, right? And that should... Oh, wait. Where was I going? Can I go? Okay. I I was going to go over here. <laughs> Let's go over here first. Wow. Sidetracked. Um, notes. Let's see what this says. Tattered shopping list. Sugar, wheat flour, fillet knife, ginger for grandpa's flatulence, ink, god liver oil, ew. I remember taking that as a kid. My dad used to make us take out. Dried mushrooms, rouge, or lesion. Also remember to ask if more beeswax will be available soon. And note on crumpled paper. Hmm. Very well. Allow me. I could do that for you. Oh, okay. Is your skill higher than mine? Nope. You know, Liliana? Hmm. Barrel. There is lamp in these barrels. There's lamp in these barrels. There's lamp oil. I love lamp. There's lamp oil in these barrels. Wow. It's too early in the morning. It's too early in the morning. That's my excuse. The door is locked and locks and looks as if it's been recently repaired. Knock on the door. Lock picking. Pick. And I can't pick the lock. Mm. Maybe we can pick the lock. You definitely pick the lock on the door. Hey, continue. Wonderful. Intruders. I hope you have a good reason for breaking and entering into my home. Hello, hello. Hmm. I apologize. I don't mean any harm. Apology accepted. The name's Dwin. Pleased to meet you. Now get out. Hey, Dwin. Reddick says he needs you for the militia. So what? You're recruiting for him? I'll tell you what I told Murdoch. I'm not risking my neck for this town. Hmm. Your chances are better out there than in here. Thanks. But I'll take my chances in here. Everyone else can run around in the open waiting to die. 
either die out here, out there, or in here now. So, that's what it comes down to, huh? <laughs> Fine. I'll go. If you want me out there so badly. That actually worked. Good man. <laughs> Spoken like someone who doesn't know me very well. Go tell Murdoch he won. And I better see you out there in the square when those creatures come. Oh, I'll be there. You just better be there. Okay. Um, anything in here to loot? Nothing here. Anything here? Nothing. Okay. Well, I'm surprised that worked because I don't think I have any intimidation points or what have you. So, okay. So we got Dwin or whatever his name is. Over here and get this. Mm, I think, okay, we can't go this way. This is a shanty little town, right? Mm. There are mm -hmm. many great tales of lost kings who return to their lands to reign in glory. I am not lost, nor for that matter, a king. And there's I mean, nothing glorious about me. You are Merrick's son. You are the rightful king of Ferelden. I am the son of a starstruck maid and an indiscreet man who just happened to be king. <sighs> Look. I can't be king. Some days I have trouble figuring out which boot goes on which foot. Complete fools are made leaders of kingdoms all the time. And you're not a complete fool. What an utter relief. And don't worry about the boots. Kings don't need to dress themselves. That's what advisors are for, isn't it? And starstruck maids, apparently. Mmm. Touché on both of your parts. Okay. Alistair fighting the idea of becoming king. Anything up here? No. So you're not going to be, oh, I just can't wait to be king. That's, okay. I don't like being out here, Dwin. The man's giving me the evil eye. And well, he should. Because you're a good for nothing liar and a thief. Well, we don't understand why we're out here. We're out here because I say we're going to help these people. And since I pay your wages, you're going to do as I say. Oh, sure, boss. Whatever you say. Thug and thug. Thug one, thug two. Dwen. These humans don't know the hilt of a sword from the pointy end. This ought to be interesting. I mean, some of them do. Some of them are good with the bow, apparently. So you watch your mouth there. All right. Um. Oh, there's stuff over here. There's a door up there. Very well. I almost missed this. Let's get to looting. No loot gets left behind. That is. That is my motto. I don't think. Ice arrows. I can give those to Liliana. <laughs> Not that she uses arrows, because for some reason she's always switching to melee. I need to um, change her 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 UI AI. Yeah, I shall do it. This is done. Uh, hello, Lloyd Bella Berwick. Hey, Berwick. Not looking for company. Okay. Uh, shouldn't you be with the militia? Why? I don't live here. Yeah, but you're visiting. Then what are you doing here? Just waiting until I can leave again. Strange seeing an elf here. Is that, is that strange? Elves aren't allowed to travel? No, I'm not saying that. I guess maybe because elves don't usually come to Red Cliff. Why, why would I say that? Um, it's just curious. I'm not here to talk. Okay. There's something about this man's demeanor. I... Uh, I don't know. I have no idea what you're talking about. But you do, don't you? I know spy when I see one. Oh, Liliana. Look, you're very pretty and all, but I was told to uh, just leave me alone. Liliana. Okay, okay. She she was a spy, so she would recognize one. Takes one to know one, doesn't it? What do you mean? What were you told to do? 
Nothing. Nobody told me to do anything. Just because you're a Grey Warden doesn't mean you can go around threatening people. How do you know I'm a Grey Warden? Yeah, how, how did you know that? I just uh, overheard it, that's mm -hmm. all. If you'll excuse me, I want to get to the Chantry before the sun goes down. This will be easier if you just tell me what you're hiding. If I... But I never... Oh, all right, I'll tell you. Just... Just don't hurt me. This is more than I bargained for. Look, they just paid me to watch the castle and send word if anything should change. But they never said anything about monsters. I haven't even been able to report anything since this started. I'm stuck. Same as you, I swear. Hmm. Who are they? Who hired you to do this? A tall fellow. I forget his name. He, uh, said he was working for Hal. Arl Rendon Hal. He's an important man. Terran Loghain's right hand. Of course. So I didn't do anything wrong. I mean, you're working for the bad guy, so... But you may not have known that. I don't know. Um... What are you supposed to watch the castle for? Just to report any changes. Honest. All I could send word about was the Arl getting sick. After that... Monsters started coming from the castle. So you know how this happened? Tell me now. I don't know anything about these creatures. When the Arl got sick, I got scared that people would think I was involved. But I swear I don't know anything about it. They sent me to watch. Maybe they knew the Arl would get sick. I don't know. How do I know you're telling the truth? Here. This is a letter from them. It has instructions and everything. Keep it. Do whatever you want with it. I just thought I was serving the king and making a bit of coin on the side. You have to believe me. Hmm. I think you should help defend the uh, Redcliffe Village tonight. Yeah. Oh, all right. I'll do it. Thank you for your mercy. I won't forget it. I don't know if I'm being merciful, because who's to say you'll survive the night, but Berwick's letter. Um, Berwick, we need your eyes and ears in Redcliffe. Stay in the village. Keep your head down and watch the castle. Report any changes and you'll be well paid. A letter in Berwick's possession. Okay. Lishaman. Are they going to talk? What are you guys doing up here? No matter how much ale I drink, I can't quite forget the sight of those creatures. Ooh. That's mighty kind of you to help us. We thought nobody would come to our aid. Mm. I can't believe Lloyd won't even give us some free ale. A time like this, and all he thinks about is turning a profit. Did you expect any different? That bastard's always been cheaper than an antique from the hall. Oop. Here we are defending the village, and he don't even have the decency to help us out. Um, it's his ale. He can charge what he wants for it. Maybe he should help defend the village instead. Better you should be drunk for the coming battle. Yeah, I mean, really, should you be drunk? I was drunk for the last two fights, and I wouldn't have it any other way. If you fought those things, you'd know. Lloyd is charging us for coin we don't even got anymore. Nobody's working right now. We're all just trying to survive. Ah, uh, what difference does it make? He won't care. Well, let me talk to Lloyd, because I want to see what's up. Hi, Lloyd. Hello there, friend. Can't say we've ever met before. Stranger to the village, I take it. Haven't had many travelers lately. All this nonsense is bad for business. Bet you regret coming, yes? Not at all. Brave words. Brave words. Well, we'll see when night falls, won't we? So, what'll it be? You are here to drink, I hope. Hmm. Actually, um... I don't want to say, because he has every right to charge them for ale. Um... Let's see what you have. Right. I've got some supplies, too, in case you're interested. With the store closed down, it doesn't hurt to pick up some of the slack, eh? That's true. Um, 
I could use some more of these, but I need to be careful about my money. Um, I'll take two of these. I mean, I, I gotta do this. I can do that. Should I get the injury kits? How many injury kits do I have? Ugh, okay, I'll just take those two. That's it, that's it, because, yeah. Oh, that lyrium too. Oh, wait, that's my lyrium. <laughs> wait a minute. I would like these. Okay, well, anyways, thank you, Lloyd. I'm not going to even ask you about the, the charging of the ale because, honestly, this is your place. Another doomed soul come to drown their sorrows here, I see. If you came here for a drink, you'd have to talk to Lloyd. He's got a vice grip on the spigots. I'm just here to keep the boys from mutiny. I mean, should they be drunk fighting? I don't know. Um. In, well, I, I'd already found out about the elf in the corner, so how has business been? What business? Without the castle soldiers, the only customers we have are local. And they're all in the militia with no money to spend. The few with any money are here, but it's not enough to justify working. Lloyd's a greasy pig. And if I didn't need this job so badly, I... Oh, so he's a greasy pig. Okay, the plot thickens. Um, you don't care for Lloyd, I take it. He gropes me and pays me next to nothing. Oh, I wow. I could be worse. Not like I've got many options. Okay, I could talk to Lloyd about this. No, no, that'll just make things worse. Mm. And that's very sweet, but I'll be fine. Why don't you leave? And go where? With no money and no prospects, I just end up somewhere else working for someone worse. You could leave if you had some help. You mean after the fighting's over? I'd really like that. What would I have to do in return? Mm. How about not end up at another tavern? Well, maybe that's something she likes. Nothing at all. I'd be glad to help. That's very kind of you. I... I don't know what to say. Um, shouldn't you be at the Chantry? Later on, yes. Lloyd will lock himself in the cellar, and I'll go to the Chantry. Are you... fighting tonight? Yes, I am. That's... good to hear. I didn't know that. I should go. Keep safe. So Lloyd is a pig. A greasy one at that. Mm. And here I was defending him for selling his ale to the militiamen. Whereas I should have been asking him to lower his prices or give them for give them to the militiamen for free. It's a sock. It's a filthy sock. How did it find its way to my bedroll? Maybe it likes you. Socks are sneaky like that. Anyway, it's not mine. It has your name stitched on it. Oh, <laughs> uh, part of Templar training back at the Chantry. The men were uh, always getting their socks mixed up. Uh, anyway, um, sorry about that. I'll take it from you right now. One of my socks is feeling a little damp anyway. A change would be nice. You're going to put it on? It's filthy. And dry. We're not exactly traveling in the lap of luxury here. What hideous habits you've picked up. I mean, he's right. It's not like we have a laundry mat nearby, or... I mean, we do have this river here. You could wash the socks on the river. But do we have rivers? The water at camp to wash? Oh, jeez. You must be Sir Perth. Yes, you are. Greetings, Grey Warden. I am as relieved as Ban Tegan is to see you here. I must admit, I do not know quite how to address you. Is my lady sufficient? Hmm. You may, um, you may call me Grey Warden, for that is what I am. Grey Warden it is, then, and thank you kindly. I am Sir Perth, until recently in direct service of Arl Eamon of Redcliffe. For now, my charge is defending the village from these evil assaults. Would that I had chosen not to seek out the urn of sacred ashes. Perhaps I would have fended off whatever evil befell the castle, or perhaps I would be dead. Ah, oh, well, with a Grey Warden aiding our defense... Perhaps all is not lost. Have you considered the, using the oil in the village store? No one told me of this. Oil, you say? How much exactly? 
Enough to set many monsters aflame. Assuming that would hurt them. Yes, I see what you have in mind. That might be effective if used carefully. Yes, excellent idea. I'll send some men to collect the oil. We'll use it to slow these creatures down. Have you anything else to ask me in the meantime? Hmm. Is there anything else I can do? We have sufficient armor and weapons, but my knights are too few to stand against the monsters without assistance. Perhaps you could approach Mother Hannah in the Chantry for some holy protection against these evil creatures. Otherwise, I do not know what else you could provide beyond your own talents. We're as prepared for the onslaught as we could possibly be, all things considered. <sighs> I'll see what I can do. That gladdens my heart to hear it. I have some questions for you. Ask me whatever you wish. Um... You mentioned something about an urn, did he? Tell me about the quest for the sacred urn. When the Isle fell sick, we were at the loss. Nothing worked to cure him, and he just kept getting worse. Finally, our lesser Isold came up with a plan. The urn of sacred ashes is a legendary artifact said to hold great healing powers. If found, it might save him. They say the followers of Andraste smuggled her ashes out of Tevinter and hid them in Ferelden. The urn's never been heard of since. We knights volunteered to seek it out. Few of us have returned. Many are still out there, unaware of what is happening here. Just what was the Earl sick with? We were never certain. He thirsted for water and then grew weaker and weaker. He brought in a mage, but even that did nothing. The Arlesa believed he was cursed and that we needed the power of Andraste herself or he would surely perish. Um... Why did the Arlesa believe anyone could find the urn? The Earl once employed a scholar, Brother Genetivi. He had proof the urn was in Ferelden, or so I was told. Okay, so the knights left the castle defenseless? Not at all. A great number of soldiers remained in Castle Redcliffe. I wonder if they perished there and were transformed into these things. The thought chills my blood. Hmm. Did no one find the other knights and bring them back? Eventually, perhaps. The ones I have here were those near enough to recall within the last few days. I only returned myself because I was passing by Redcliffe and heard the news of strange attacks. Okay, carry on. As you wish, Grey Warden. Make a watch over you. Okay, so, um... Windmill. Oh, it's sort of like... I shall do it. Home again, but with more undead. Oh, that's right. You did live here, didn't you? Should we go in here? Love letter, injury kit, codex updated, a collection of embarrassing personal communications between the spoiled wealthy and their objects of obsession. You are filthy, a beast. Such depravity have never been forced to suffer. Our words are so laden when they leave your lips is beyond decent imagining. Madam, I love you. Sir Ogold. Okay. Calls her a beast. Nothing here. All right. Back to the chantry to get some kind of blessing from the revered mother. Anything over here? This looks dangerous. There's no way I would walk across. I might, actually. I might. House. Oh, hel hello. Dernal Garrison, hi. Yes, what can I do for you? Uh, I have a letter from you from the Blackstone Regulars. I do. I knew this time would come. I should have listened to my wife. Don't sign that paper, she said. They might pay you a few sovereigns now, but they'll be back. Blast. I'll see you on the front lines, I suppose. Okay. I... I don't think I've ever been in this house. New Codex. Ballad of Aislay. The wind that stirs their shadows graves carries their song across the sands. Heed our words, hear our cry, 
the great are sworn, in peace we lie. Heed our words, hear our cry, our names recalled, we cannot die. When darkness comes and swallows light, heed our words, and we shall rise. From the Ballad of Aisle, said to have been written after the Battle of Aisle, which ended the fourth blight, 520 exalted. Hmm. Okay. Anything over here? We've got a chest that I probably can't unlock. I unlocked it! Yay! It's always an accomplishment when I can. Any no, that's just wood. Okay. Looks like stairs for a minute. Honestly, I do not think I've ever been in this house. <laughs> mm, quite surprised. Quite surprised indeed. I think we're almost ready. We're almost ready, Murdoch. We just whoop. Let's not do that. Just need to do one more thing. Oh, hello. Nevin said you were the one who found him. Yes. I can't yes. possibly repay you. The brat was. Mo oh gosh, just stay safe, both of you. The maker sent you. I just know it. Thank you again. You're welcome. Wind leveled up. Okay, Banty. Ah, here we go, Mother Hannah. What is it you need, child? Um, ooh. Sir Perth needs holy protection for the knights. I have done all I can for them. I pray for them each night and seek the Maker's forgiveness for their sins before they face their deaths. What Sir Perth seeks is something that is not in my power to give. Um, what do you mean? Can you just bless them? Can't you just, what do you mean? Sapath believes that I can protect them against these creatures, a shield only the Maker can provide, and that I withhold this power. Well, can't you just tell him the Maker will watch over him? Morale is a powerful thing, you know. You mean you want me to let them think the Maker protects them in a real sense? I will not lie to them like that. Okay. Um, I don't really want to lie, but I don't want their morale to be low. You will simply have to do without then. What about, what it, I mean, if it helps. I suppose their belief in the Maker's power could inspire them, but it just seems like trickery. Very well. If it keeps them alive, I will do what I must. I have a number of silver cast holy symbols. Tell Sir Perth that he can have them, and that wearing them will confer the Maker's protection. Now please, let me tend to these poor folk. I must do what I can, and I suggest you do the same. Oof, okay, but okay, so here's the thing. I was just saying, just to say, not, not to give them some necklace or whatever to to symbolize their protection just to say it like yeah you've got an extra blessing but okay back to Sir Perth and then we'll prepare for the night can't say Sir Perth <laughs> <laughs> what is an English accent? Okay, okay, I'm stopping. I'm stopping. I promise. Hello, Sir Perth. The Knights of Redcliffe are ready to fight at your disposal. Um, you said you wanted holy protection. Have you spoken to the revered mother? Has she offered anything? Yes, Mother Hannah has some holy amulets. Would those do? Must we do this? Oh. The faith that will protect these men must come from their heart, surely. If they are the same as the symbols worn by their priests, well, that would more than suffice. You think it would actually help? Of course I do. These are Maker's symbols. What better protection could we ask for? Mm. I will send some men to collect the amulets. Please give my regards to Mother Hannah for seeing some sense of last. Okay. I'm ready to make my stand here. Do I want to make it? All right. Carry on. 
As you wish, Grey Warden. Make a watch over you. Oof, Liliana did not like that. I didn't think she would. Okay. Sorry, Liliana, that I lost five. Five cool points with Liliana. I'm sorry, but what was I supposed to do? I guess I could have said she couldn't help, but then why would I have just... That would have been a waste of time. All right. Murdoch. The repairs are underway surprisingly quickly, considering how drunk Owen is. There's Mr. Elf. We may just make it. I'm ready to make my stand. Let's wait for sundown. Are you sure? Yeah. There's still time left if you need to talk with Sir Perth or do anything else. Nope, we're done. I'm ready. Then good luck to you. You'll need it. And here we go. They're coming. Get to your positions. Make ready. Yes. Light the traps. Burn Attack a nightfall. All right, let's go. Nice. Come on. Get out of the fire, you geniuses. Oh, jeez. The monsters are attacking from the lake. They're attacking the barricades. We need help. Okay. Knight, stay here and guard the path. Come on, we need to hurry. Okay. When drink up. Way down here. Oh gosh. Hurry! All right. Don't you dare.
Okay. Who's who died? Someone died. Don't you dare. Oh, gosh. Any more? Dawn arrives, and we survive the night. We are victorious. Yes. <laughs> We're and excited. this victory came at great cost, we must remember none of us would be here were it not for the heroism of these good folk beside me. I thank you, dear lady. Truly the Maker smiled on us when he sent you here in our darkest hour. There is still much more to do, Bantigan. Surely these people deserve some small celebration, don't you think? There is time yet. Sure. Let us bow our heads and give honor to those who gave their lives in defense of Redcliffe. Who do we lose? Murdoch of Redcliffe, oh. mayor and beloved father, we salute you. You and so many others who have perished here, walk with he who is your maker. Long may you know the peace of his love. So let it be. With the Maker's favor, the blow we delivered today is enough for me to enter the castle and seek out your Arl. Be wary and watch for signs of renewed attack. We shall return with news as soon as we are able. Now we've no time to waste. Meet me at the mill. We can talk further there. So we lost Murdoch. Old woman. Oh, okay. That, that kind of sucks. Let's talk to Tomas. Can we? So we won the battle? Yeah. If this is what war is like, with so many people hurt and dying, I don't want to think about what fighting the Dark Swarm will be like. Mm. Van Tegan or Al Eamon will be calling for volunteers soon, won't they? Yeah. They'll need an army to fight in the south now. Yeah. I'll go when they call me, I guess. I'm going to get drunk first, though. Okay. If you'll excuse me. Sure. Okay, um, let's go in the Chantry and see if there's anyone alive in there. Well, obviously there's people alive in here. Let's talk to Caitlin. You saved us. I can't believe we're alive and it's finally over. Um, what are you going to do now? With mother and father both gone, I suppose they'll send us to an orphanage, maybe separated. At least we're both alive. I won't forget what you did, though. Neither of us will. Thank you. Why do you have to go to an orphanage? With mother and father dead, we don't have any money. I think we have relatives in Denerim, but we've no way to get there. We'll be fine. I promised mother I'd see to Bevan's safety, and I will. Perhaps I could help you get to Denerim. Oh, your path is probably much too dangerous for us. There are wagons going there. But it would be expensive. I'm sure 500 silver would cover it. I mean, okay. That's 
Thanks a lot, money. Be kind of you. This is more than I ever dreamed of. With this, I can hire a wagon to take us to Denerim. We have family there, and they'll take us in for sure now. Come on, Bevin, let's find one now. Make a watch over you. How much did I just give I'll her? I'll never forget you. How much did I just give her? Ooh, five gold. Okay, I thought so. Um, okay. We're awfully generous. Mother Hannah. There are many gone who we must honor. But we must also remember those who aided us in our darkest hour. Okay. Jetta? These are terrible times. Just terrible. Yeah, they are. Okay. Um, I think I want to talk to one more person because she was the... The... What do you call them? Barmaids? The wench? No. Barmaid. Up here. Yeah. Look at everybody here. You know what, Lloyd? If it isn't the hero of the day, what can I get you? Hmm. I should go. Right then. I was going to see about you charging people, but... Hmm. Too late. Admit for a while, I didn't think either of us would survive. Mm, well, it's good I'm surprised to see you too. Did. Well, I believe I made you a promise. You mean about helping me leave? I, I wouldn't hold you to that. You've already done so much for us. Nonsense! I want to help. What do you have in mind? Oh, we're gonna give another way. Uh, Five hundred silver be enough to start a new life? But that could get me to Denerim. What would you want in return for such a gift? I promise not to work in a place like this. Amen to that. Thank you. I, I can never repay this, but I'll think of a way. I swear. Wonder where she ends up. That's another five gold. We are broke. So, graffiti. Let's say, graffiti in Redcliffe's tavern. Don't eat the cheese scratched in the bar of Redcliffe's Tavern. Okay, don't eat the cheese. Is there any cheese back here? Nothing back here. Okay. All right, so on that note, I'm going to take a break, and then we're going to go ahead and meet uh, Ban Tegan. Or is it Ban Tegan? Yeah, Ban Tegan at the top of the hill. Um, I suppose that's where, yeah, I think that's where he said Anyway, we'll meet him and see what he's about, and uh, we'll be right back.